<laughs> we are joined by John Wilner, the Pac-12 uh, hotline, and also the San Jose Mercury News and covers the Pac-12. Thank you for your time, John. Well, it, it's setting up to just be a battering ram of games week after week. And, of course, what, now ranked 7, 8, 9, and 10. And I'm not so sure Washington shouldn't be ranked uh, at number one right now. So is everything kind of gone according to plan other than Colorado being – despite the loss to Oregon, better than anyone thought? I think Colorado better than anyone thought, and Washington State better than anyone thought. They, Washington State's got two wins over ranked teams. They beat Wisconsin and Oregon State. The other teams, it was all kind of expected with the quarterbacks returning, the coaching staff. You know, it was, this has been the most anticipated Pac-12 season in a long time on the field. Uh, and it has kind of, you know, met the expectation so far. Twenty nine and five non conference record. You know, it really couldn't have couldn't have asked. If you're the Pac twelve, you couldn't have asked for anything more. It's like been a dream September after what was obviously a nightmare August. John, the the quarterbacks in this league, the way that it's shifted. Now obviously this is all changing, but was this a I mean, what do you think started the shift to the kind of recruiting and attack of the transfer portal in the Pac-12 uh, over the last couple of years? I mean, I think it all starts with the coaches you hire. Mm-hmm. And, you know, USC in December of 2021, in I think it was either a 10-day or two-week span, USC hired Lincoln Riley, Washington hired Kalen DeBoer, and Oregon hired Dan Lanning. And, you know, of those three, two of them were big time. Bob Riley obviously shocked the the country. Lanning was a huge name with Georgia's success. The DeBoer hire was kind of under the radar. He had been the president of state for two years. But obviously, the guy's a fantastic coach. So I think a lot of what we're seeing now is based in those two two weeks when those three coaches were hired. Because Washington had been down. And that's obviously a story program out here and, and a big brand. And now the Huskies are back. USC is back. And Oregon is, is rolling. Then you add in, you know, Utah's just consistency uh, during the Kyle Whittingham era. And all of a sudden, you know, your top programs have got great coaches. And the uh, results are that the players want to go play for the coaches. That's where it all starts, right? The investment in the coaching making the right decision with your coaching and is where it all starts a lot of those guys that you just mentioned getting a lot of attention um especially you know caleb williams for example <coughs> michael Penix, but cam ward uh up there in pullman a texas guy from uh, columbia high school uh just what are your thoughts on how dynamic he has been for the cougars these past couple of seasons obviously a huge win over oregon state the other night he put up monster numbers but just what have been your impressions of of the texas gunslinger there in cam ward yeah, yeah, and he so he was an incarnate word, and he he transferred to Washington State when the Cougars hired, uh, you know his his coach at, at uh, incarnate word, so uh, as their offensive coordinator, and that got him to Pullman, and he came in with a ton of hype, you know everybody saying oh he's way better than an FCS quarterback, you know he's got Power Five talent, and last year, you know it just seemed like it was a little bit of a tough transition for him. But now he is playing to that talent. I mean, the guy's been dynamite. He is as good as anybody in the conference. The crazy thing is that between Cam Ward, Michael Penix, Caleb Williams, Bo Nix, and Shadur Sanders, one of those guys is the fifth best quarterback in this league. And they would probably be the best quarterback in most other leagues. It's nuts. There were a lot of people that expected eventually what Oregon might do to Colorado, but it has been an incredible story. And there was always the wonder about the value of Colorado because of all that was said during the summer. Um, have It's not so much have they surprised you. Have they blown you away about how, how well they started the year? I'm not sure I'd say blown away. Probably a little better than I expected. Um, I mean, you know, Colorado State at home, that should be standard for, for Colorado, really. Uh, and Nebraska is not very good, right? I mean, Nebraska lost to Minnesota. They're, they're not very good. I, I, I was impressed by the TCU win. Uh, I, I just think that 
Dion had them playing at a very high level for the first game, given all of the tur- the roster turnover. Uh, so, yeah, I've been impressed. Uh, I, I still think kind of that they're not quite ready to be an elite team, especially in a conference like the Pac-12 this year, because they aren't good enough. I just don't think they're good enough at the line to scrimmage, and that was exposed by Oregon. But, you know, give Dion two more recruiting cycles, and, and they'll be really good up front. And, uh, and you know, who knows how long he's going to stay. But they're certainly on a great trajectory, and they have captured the public's imagination, I think, in a great way. I think the sport just benefits from a story like this. It's different. It's like if Magic Johnson coached Fullerton State for two years and then became <laughs> a Power 5 basketball coach. You know, you got an American sports icon, and uh, I think it's terrific for college football. John... This is a, could be a strange year. We were just talking about it with the Pac-12 in that they are the conference right now that I would say if it comes down to it and you have to make an argument over which Power 5 conference should have two teams and a 14 playoff, it's probably the Pac-12, but they're so good they might also wind up on the outside looking into this thing going, how do we get here now? Yeah, that would be, yeah, I know. It's crazy. I, I cannot believe that the Pac-12 would be the first conference to get a two loss team in the playoff i just don't think that's going to happen so it's going to be really hard for somebody to get through this this conference with only one loss given the schedule because usc utah washington oregon they're all playing each other this year last year usc didn't play washington and oregon so uh it's set up for you know an incredible october and november and can anybody get through 12 and 1, maybe. Could they get a second team in? I, I have a hard time believing that just because, you know, the, the SEC and the Big Ten will, you know, just the brand names of those leagues, uh, I have a hard time believing the Pac 12 will get two in. But they certainly, it's certainly a, a fantastic league and it's going to be great, great football down the stretch. And, and, you know, it's the offenses are good and that's what people want to see. John, how much better is, is USC overall, you think? Uh, particularly their big question mark on defense. It seemed like they came out guns blazing, albeit against a weak schedule this past weekend, a little bit more of a struggle than maybe anticipated, and, and that schedule starts to ramp up. Uh, how different, how much better are, are the Trojans in your mind from what you've seen? I don't know that they're better than they were last year. I okay. think that's still to be determined. Uh, they did not look good against Arizona State, and Arizona State's the best team they've played. They played Nevada San Jose State, Stanford, and ASU. Those teams are 3-14. and 14. Uh, So, you know, we'll see. The Colorado game Saturday is going to be a great test for both teams, right? Is Colorado the, more like the team we saw against TCU or more like the team we saw against Oregon? And is SC good enough to go into Boulder and win a 9 a.m. game for USC? Which credit to them for being willing to play at 9 a.m. Uh, but I think it's going to be a telling game for both I, I am not sure about SC. I have Washington State, my Pac-12 power rankings. I've got Washington State ahead of USC this week. Uh, in fact, you, you brought that up. That was such an entertaining game with Cam Ward and what he's done, getting the kind of attention, and, and what a huge win. of the. And a lot of people are like, these are the teams nobody wants. Right now, it doesn't matter. It's about right now. Right. It is right now. It is it's a little bit inseparable, but certainly what they're doing on the field right now, uh, both of them, is is a it's a great story you know the cougars they beat wisconsin two ranked teams at home and they basically led both games throughout and were ahead by double digits most of the time so they they could very well be the the sleeper team in the pac-12 this year uh they're they're very good on defense cam ward can can sling the ball around uh there are a lot and the funny thing is they're you know they've got a 28 year old offensive coordinator Ben Arbuckle and it's a, and so did Oregon's uh, offensive coordinator Will Stein who was at UTSA he's young ASU's uh, head coach Kenny Dillingham's like 32 there's a lot of young Dan Lanning's very young a lot of young coaches out here that you know use a, a very entertaining style of football it's a little bit of the, the you know the air raid kind of thing and they relate very well to their players and to their quarterbacks John, uh, what do you think about the potential for a relegation model merger with the Mountain West for Oregon State and, and Wazoo? 
Well, I mean, I've always thought that college football is going to end up with that model. I just thought it would probably be in the 2030s. And everything that's happened in the Pac-12 in the last six weeks has kind of seems like it has sped up the transformation of the sport, right? I mean, how long are Florida State George, and, and Clemson going to be in the ACC? That kind of thing. How long is Ohio State going to be willing to take the same amount of Big Ten revenue as Rutgers? Uh, how long is Alabama going to be willing to share equally with South Carolina, right? We're, we're moving at warp speed towards the transformation of the sport. And relegation promotion is part is going to be part of it, I think. I just don't know that contractually they can make it work because it would require all 12 schools in the Mountain West agreeing to a model that doesn't suit a bunch of the schools in the Mountain West. Like, wh- why would San Jose State or Hawaii or Utah State vote for it? And if they don't have enough votes, they can't implement it. So that's where I'm kind of uh, stumbling over how they can actually execute the model and put it into, you know, implement it. Yeah, that's always been my question as well, is why would you go along with that? <laughs> like, I just don't know why you would go along with base being demoted, right. possibly, unless you just had to. But, John, where— Yeah, that's the thing. The demotion isn't going to work. And right. that's the same thing in the Big Ten, right? I mean, Purdue is is not going to agree to, you know, take less money than Ohio State uh, willingly. It's going to have to be the big schools— being proactive and leaving and forming their own division, so to speak. I, I don't think that uh, I don't think they can do it any other way, and it's going to be complicated uh, and it's going to take some time. In, in any given year, when one of those might have made a bad coaching hire, are they going to be like Michigan has to go down for a couple years? Are they going to be you know good with that? I don't think so. That that's going to be problematic as well. Uh, but John, where are we as far as the latest on Oregon State and Washington State? I mean, Paul mentioned one of the the options that has been floated out there, but just bare bones, where is that whole situation at the moment with the Pac-12 rights and Klyovkov and just what all they're they're looking at possibility wise uh, moving into the future. It's on hold as things play out in court, right? Yeah. Washington State and Oregon State have sued the Pac-12 to get uh, the court to decide which schools are on the Pac-12's board of directors. And those schools would have control of the money. And Washington State and Oregon State believe they are the only two uh, rightful board members. Uh, I don't know how long that's going to take. I think it could be several more weeks or even a month or two before we know for sure. Once they determine, the the courts determine the makeup of the Pac-12 board, then it'll probably move swiftly because they'll they'll figure out, all right, here's how much money we have access to, and here's the li- the assets and liabilities, and here's the here are the options. And the options are really for Oregon State to join the Mountain West in a traditional move, like, you know, Utah is joining the Big 12, or have Mountain West schools come into the Pac-12 and and preserve the Pac-12's uh, name and brand because there's you know it's been battered like you know it's like got got into the ring with Mike Tyson right mm-hmm. but there's still more value in the Pac-12 brand than the Mountain West brand mm-hmm. if you're under the Pac-12 banner you have all the history you've got Jackie Robinson and Arthur Ashe and Tiger Woods and Barry Bonds who own all that history and there's value to that. And I think Oregon and Washington, Oregon State and Washington State would prefer to be able to preserve the Pac-12 name. John, thank you very much for your time as always. It's uh, amazing. The deepest they've been in a long, long time is a year that's kind of like the, the, the swan song. And it's, it is crazy uh, and, and, and kind of hard to fathom, but we're here, and that's what it's going to be like. John Wilner, the Pac-12 hotline, and also San Jose Mercury News. Yeah, good stuff.